What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner, and today it is viewer build episode 23. The theme was suppressed shorty, so basically any gun that was short and suppressed. We did get a handgun or two, but um, yeah, it fits the build. So again, suppressed shorties, and if you want a sneak peek at next week's viewer build video, it's gonna be suppressed heavy hitters. I figure we could keep that theme kind of going. So yeah, I'm thinking AR-10s, just anything bigger than 5.56 or 300 blackout. So 308, 65, stuff like that. Um, but anything decent size, heavy hitter, and it's gotta be suppressed. Doesn't matter the barrel length on that. It'd be really cool to see like a suppressed 50 or 300, something big like that. So if you guys wanna participate in next week's viewer build video, you can send your picture to my email. It is sales at atroxco.com and send a good horizontal picture, please. And with that being said, enjoy this week's viewer builds. All right, guys, kicking off this week's viewer build video, we have a really cool looking Virtus here, and this comes from Joe. So I'm gonna go through his build list. It's a 12 and a half inch 5.56 MCX Virtus. And it started off as a 16 inch LE model with the 12 inch handguard. Uh, he has a other picture here to show that. And then he had the barrel cut down to 12.5 and gave it the rattle can treatment. He plans to do a video of this rifle on his YouTube channel. It is modern underscore muskets. So go check that out. And here's the build list. So it's got a Silencerco Velos K suppressor, a Surefire M600 on an Arasaka mount, an emissary development handbrake, a Silencerco Ambi lower with the SIG trigger safety and grip. So it started out looking like it had a SIG lower and he swapped it to the Silencerco. It's got a Trigicon ACOG. It's a TA-02 with the piggyback Trigicon RMR. It's got a SIG AR stock adapter with a Magpul SLK stock. And yeah, that camo job looks awesome on there. I really like it. You did a great job with that. And just overall, I really like that build. So thank you for sharing that one, Joe. This next one comes from Evan, and this is his Flux Raider X SBR. It's got the SIG Custom Works fire control unit, a SIG compact slide, and a SIG compact threaded barrel. It's got a DPM spring kit, a TACDEV F10 charging handle, a PWS BDE9 suppressor in the short configuration, a Surefire X300 turbo, an Aimpoint Acro on a BNT 22mm QD mount, and he says, the gun is a little gassy, but it shoots very well. Definitely the most fun gun I own, and it turns heads at the range. I've always really liked these Flux Raiders, and I want to get one. They actually just partnered with SIG and did like a Legion Raider, which looks awesome. I could definitely see myself getting one of those if one ever comes to the store I work at. So yeah, thank you for sharing that one, Evan. I really like how it came out. This next one comes from Trayvon, and he's not quite finished with this one yet. Still trying to decide on what light I want to throw on it and waiting for my local gun shop to get a chemo mount and muzzle break in for me. But here is my Mud Ferret so far. That is an awesome name, the Mud Ferret. All right, so going through his list, he's got a Dead Air Nomad 30 direct mount. It's got a Ballistic Advantage 8-inch 300 blackout barrel, a Suppletive Arms AGB, so adjustable gas block. I haven't heard that acronym yet, but I got you. It's got a Midwest Industries SP handguard, Chris backup iron sights, an Aero Enhanced Upper, a Black Rain Upper Parts Kit, a Bootleg Adjustable Bolt Carrier, Armaspec Ambi Charging Handle, a Hollow Sun 510C, Aero Enhanced Lower and Parts Kit, minus the Fire Control Group. It's got a Geisley Super Dynamic Combat Trigger, a Radiant Extended Bolt Release, a Radiant Talon Safety Selector, Norgon Ambi Mag Release, a B5 Systems Grip, a HB PDW Brace, so the Honey Badger Brace, and then an LBX Two Point Sling. And that looks really good. Like as soon as I opened this up, it looked like a honey badger. Like I knew it wasn't a honey badger, but it obviously looks like a really good build of one. And uh, yeah, the mud ferret looks awesome. So thank you for sharing that one, Trayvon. This next one comes from Daniel, and this is his suppressed full DLC Staccato P with the X carry cuts and a K can. And uh, yeah, looks awesome. I don't think I've ever seen a suppressed Staccato, at least not sent to me yet. So going through his list here, it's a Silencer Co. Omega 9K suppressor with a rugged piston. It's got a Surefire X300 Vampire Light. Optic is the Aimpoint Acro P2 on a Dawson Precision Optics Plate, directly from Staccato, as well as a Double Alpha Academy 2011 Shielded Safety. And uh, yeah, he fit the safety. I used to be a gunsmith before I came an engineer, so it was easy fit for him. But yeah, that looks really great, and I bet it shoots nice with the suppressor on there. 1911s in general are pretty good, so I imagine a 2011 is even better. But thank you for sharing that one, Daniel. These next two come from Jojo, and his Instagram is Rooftop Roadie, and it looks pretty sweet here. He's got a Palmetto State Armory 102 and a PPS 43 SPR. So we're going to go through his PSA first. 
So for his PSA 102, it's got about 7,000 rounds on it so far. It doesn't seem to slow it down. It started out as a barreled receiver, and he slowly tossed in an ALG trigger, a Texas Weapon System dogleg dust cover, a dead air 24 by one and a half flash hider, accompanied with a dead air Sandman S suppressor, along with the Manta suppressor cover. Lastly, the primary arms ACSS red dot, a Streamlight HLX, and a Zenitco Alpha 1 stock. Psych. He says he can't afford it, so it's an airsoft clone. Makes sense. And then he said Dremel, JB Weld, and Loctite solve all problems. That looks great. And in the first picture, it took me a couple seconds to realize the PPS-43 was there. Uh, your camo job is really good. And then the PPS-43 is a 9mm SBR. I forget who makes those, and he didn't say. Um, they're just like imported guns. They're actually pretty inexpensive. I think you could buy them for like 500 or less dollars. But that camo job looks great on both of them. And I bet that AK shoots good. And it's chambered in 5.56 uh, by the looks of it, unless it's 5.45. He didn't mention it, but I assume it's 5.56. But yeah, thank you for sharing that, Joe. It came out really good. And then you also have a sling. I think that's an Ed Sherman sling. I can't tell from here, but yeah, they look great. So thank you for sharing, Jojo. This next one comes from Zach, and this is his home defense slash night vision setup. It is a Noveski N4 Diplomat 7.94 inch 300 blackout upper on an LMT lower build. So I'm gonna go through his parts list here from tip to butt. The suppressor is a Surefire 300 SPS made for 300 blackout. I've always wanted one of these suppressors. It's got a Surefire three prong flash hider on there. Again, it's the complete Noveski N4 upper. The light is a Mod Light PLH short body with a Surefire Scout DS00 tail cap. So for the light switch, it's got two Mod Light switches, one for the light and one for the laser on a Driven Arms Dangler. For light on 12 position and laser switch on 10 o'clock position. The grip is a Slate Black Industries SVG grip. The optic and mounts, it's got a Castle Group FRT226 on an Aimpoint Comp M5. The offset mount is a Castle Group FRT45A for an Aimpoint Acro P2. And then Castle Group Diving Board for Full Power PEC 15. Reason for the two red dots is for zeroing subs and supers. The Comp M5 is for subs and the offset P2 is for supers, mostly shooting subs for this build. That is a really good idea. Um, I know some people may not like that, but I actually haven't even thought about that for something like this. And I think it's good. So I know that might be a more particular thing, having two red dots on your gun, but supers and subs shoot very differently. So I get it in case nobody else gets it. Uh, charging handle is a Radiant SD charging handle. The lower is an LMT Defender lower with a Geisley lower parts kit, also running a Magpul bad lever. It's got a Geisley SDC trigger with CMC anti-walk pins an LMT Enhanced Trigger Guard, a BCM Gunfighter Mod 3 Grip, the buttstock is an LMT PDW stock kit, which comes with everything, buttstock, buffer tube, spring, end plate, castle nut, and weight. The sling is a Feral Concept Slingster in Multicam Black. And then the ammo is Black Hills 115 grain and 198 grain dual performance rounds. And yeah, that's a pretty sick setup. I have not seen a 300 Blackout setup quite like that. So um, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Zach. All right, next up, we got two ARs here for Mason. We're gonna go through his 300 Blackout first because he has a 300 Blackout and a 5.56. One is a budget build for my first actual build. Second is not so budget. So for his 300 Blackout build, he named it the Corn Syrup Wolverine. <laughs> you guys are coming out with some awesome names. We should keep this trend going. It's got a Q Trash Bandit on a Cherry Bomb muzzle device. It's got a Sightmark Low Pro Mini Green Laser, Magpul MBUS 3 backup sights, an Olight Odin Mini, BCM M-Lock covers, an Emissary Handbrake, a Davidson Defense 8.5 inch 300 blackout upper. He swapped the handguard to a Midwest Industries 8 inch combat rail. Trash Panda wrench flats are barely tucked underneath the rail. Another thing with the Trash Panda is you can also use a socket for the front in case you didn't know. It's got a Magpul QD Paraclip adapter in socket on the rail for when I want the sling to be a two point. It's got a Holosun 510 green dot with their lower one third plate. It's got a Breek Arms Warhammer Micro Latch charging handle. It's got a Magpul sling with a single paraclip and single QD. It's got an American Tactical Millsport lower and it's the first strip lower I built out with. It's got a Phase 5 Ambi Bolt Catcher and Release, a Magpul Extended Mag Release, a BCM Trigger Guard, a Timber Creek Ambi Safety Selector on 45 degree, a Kung Fu Grip with B5 Grip Plug, a BCM QD End Plate, it's got an SBA3 Brace, Buffer tube, castle nut, trigger, and takedown pins are from a lower parts kit that came with the upper. And then he's got Magpul 20 and 30 round 300 blackout mags. Everything tan is rattle can, but considering Cerakote to mimic a honey badger. 
Yeah, I mean, either way, you could go the Cerakote route or you could rattle can it. I think if you're already partially rattle can, you might as well just rattle can the rest. But I do like that build. And then we're going to go on to his 556 next. So for his 556 build, he's got an Otter Creek Polonium K direct thread suppressor. It's got Magpul Pro Embus backup sights. It's got a Cloud Defensive Rain 3.0 Micro, and it comes with the tail cap and pressure switch. It's got a 100 Concepts ruggedized light cap. It's got BCM M-Lock covers and a four slot section of Magpul Picatinny cover behind the pressure switch. It's got a Unity vertical foregrip, a Magpul rail quick detach mount for an Edgar Sherman design Ranger sling in green. It's got a Sons of Liberty 11.5 M76 upper with their bolt carrier group. He swapped the barrel to a CAC 11.5 mid-length suppressor only barrel and CAC is in KAK. It's got an EOTech EXPS 3.0 a Hollow Sun 3X magnifier says, I don't use it that much, so I can't justify another $400 for the EOTech G33. Makes sense. It's got a BCM Mark II charging handle. And then for the lower, it's a Griffin Mark II lower. It comes with the Ambi bolt catch and release. It also comes with the left side mag release and built in trigger guard. Built the rest of it with Geisley checker takedown pins, battle arms, enhanced mag catch, a Radian Talon 45 degree safety a LaRue MBT flat trigger, a B5 grip and grip plug, holding spare CR123 batteries for the optic and light. It's got a Geisley buffer assembly with a Super 42 spring and H3 buffer, and then replaced end plate with a Griffin QD end plate. And then it's running a Magpul MOE SL stock, and then a Lancer Smoke 30 round shown with the Liberty Overwatch 223 ammo. And yes, you are right. You did night and day difference for your budget build versus your nicer build, but I think that's a great starting point. And there's nothing wrong with starting small and working your way up. But I like the way you did both your builds and it really shows in the second build that you kind of went all out. So thank you for sharing those, Mason. They came out really great. This next one comes from Kyle and it's looking pretty sick. He's got a 300 blackout, eight and a half inch PSA Jackal SBR. And it's got a rugged Micro 30 suppressor, a crisp vertical grip, a B5 LS2 grip, a Lage manufacturing folding stock topped off with the Trigicon SRS. Now that is a very short build list, but that is a badass setup and I'm very jealous of the Trigicon SRS. I've always wanted one of those. Uh, they discontinued them, but um, I know one day I will get one. But I really like your build here. It kind of looks like the 300 Blackout B&T or ACR, SCAR, stuff like that. Um, the Jackals seem pretty nice. I haven't got to shoot one myself yet, but yeah, that thing looks sick. So thank you for sharing that one, Kyle. This next one comes from Blake and this is his poor man's Mach 18. And yeah, we're just going with these names. I really like them. So going from his build list here, he's got a Huxworks Flow 556K suppressor, a Streamlight Protac rail mount HLX Pro Light, a Magpul short vertical grip, Knight's Armament backup front iron sight, a LaRue tactical quad rail. I like this one better than Daniel Defense. I know it's blasphemy. Well, LaRue makes amazing stuff too, so no complaints from me. It's got a Palmetto upper receiver and barrel. He's got a Roscoe SOCOM profile barrel coming soon. It's got a mil-spec charging handle, a Geisley Airborne is on the way. It's got the Palmetto State Armory M4A1 clone lower, a mil-spec trigger with a JP 3.5 pound trigger and hammer springs. It's got Carolina Laserworks UID tag. It's got a Holosun 403 with a UTG riser and re -straps. He has an Arasaka riser coming soon. It's got a Holosun HM3X magnifier. It's got a Knight's Armament USMC marked rear iron sight and then a Blue Forest Gear padded Vicker sling. Most of the accessories were used by me in my time in the Marine Corps, the sling, the front and rear sights, the Magpul vertical grip, and the Magpul P-Mag. Nice. Well, thank you for your service, and thank you for sending this build. It came out really good. This next one comes from Tyler, and this is his BCM build. So the upper is a BCM Mark II 11 and inch carbine upper with the MCMR 10 handguard. It's got a BCM wide body lower receiver. It's got the BCM Ambi Mark II charging handle, a Huxworks 556 muzzle device with the Huxworks Flow 762 titanium suppressor. It's got a Cloud Defensive Rain 3.0 light, a BCM CAG angled grip. It's got an EOTech EXPS 3.0, and it looks like it's on a riser, but you didn't say. It kind of looks like the Unity riser to me. It's got an SB Tactical SBA5 pistol brace, a Magpul MS4 QD sling. It's got a DNH magazine, and then the ammo used is Hornady VMAX Superformance 55 grain varmint rounds for home defense. Nice. Well, that's an awesome build. Thank you for sharing that one, Tyler. 
This next one comes from Woody, and this is his Q Sugar Weasel SBR build. So going through his build list here, he's got a Q Thunder Chicken suppressor. It's got the Coltac suppressor cover on it. It's got a Surefire Scout Light Pro with a pressure pad on top, a partial Magpul hand stop, a T-Rex Arms 45 degree canted red dot mount with a Holosun 407C on it. It's got a Primary Arms 3X Prism with mounts that came in the box. It's got a Q G-Sling on there. It's got all stock internals, but comes with the Radian Raptor charging handle, a Reptilia grip, and he's pretty happy with how the build turned out. And I agree, it looks awesome. And you didn't mention, but Sugar Weasels don't normally come with that stock. So it looks like he bought the Honey Badger stock for it, unless it came like that, I don't know. But the whole thing with the Sugar Weasel is it's kind of like they're more less expensive Honey Badgers. So they came with standard lowers and a standard stock normally from what I know. But yeah, that came out great. And I definitely like it with that stock and the shorter barrel. So thank you for sharing that one, Woody. Finishing it off, we have Virgil's Sugar Weasel, and I did not have it come out this way. You guys sent them back to back, so we are finishing it off with another Sugar Weasel. Again, this comes from Virgil, and this has the buffer tube that I was thinking from the last one. So it looks like it's a Sugar Weasel pistol. It's got the Q Thunder Chicken as well for the suppressor. It's got an Olight Odin GL Mini. It's got Fab Defense Op Mod Backup Iron Sights, a Hollow Sun Op Mod AEMS Sight, so Op Mod is normally the Optics Planet Edition. It's got the Strike Industries Billet Dust Cover and then a QG Sling in Multicam. I think that's really funny that we got those back to back and they both look similar but different in their own ways. That came out great, Virgil, so thank you for sharing that one and thank you to everyone else that submitted this week. These were a lot of really great suppressed shorty builds, so thank you guys. Thank you again to everyone that participated this week. Those were a lot of really great builds and it was kind of funny how we ended on two Q Sugar Weasels but if you guys are looking to participate in next week's, again, the theme is gonna be suppressed heavy hitters. So a bigger caliber weapon that is also suppressed, send the picture to my email at sales at atroxco.com. And then remember, ideally a uh, horizontal picture, high quality, please. And yeah, I look forward to seeing those. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.